Hello friends, my name is Kim. Uh, it's been a minute, I've been gone for a very long time and I apologize for that. If you're at all interested in knowing what I've been doing with my life for the last like year and a half, feel free to let me know and I'm happy to make a video about it. But uh, I wanted to just kind of jump right in and get back to the books, talking about the books. <laughs> so uh, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're an old friend who is coming back, then thank you for sticking around. <laughs> Uh, so let's get right into it. Today's video is going to be my March TBR. So I've been kind of struggling a bit with making TBRs lately. Uh, apparently over the last like year and a half, I've become a mood reader. So I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to navigate that. Uh, I've always in the past been somebody who likes to plan out their reading. Like I've always had a really long list of books I want to get to and then I pick from that list and make a shorter list for each month. So I've always been like a plan ahead type of reader and then sticked mostly, st sticked, stuck mostly to <laughs> that list. Uh, however, lately I'm like struggling with that. So I have to be in the mood to pick up a book. And if I'm not in the mood to read that book, I'm like, mm, no, no, please don't make me read that. Because I just, I don't know, I can't, I will literally not read because I don't feel like reading the book that I'm trying to read. Uh, and this is a problem because I also am terrible at DNFing books. And so I will continue to stick to a book that I'm not enjoying. And then I won't read because I don't want to read that book. It's been, it's been a cycle guys, it's been a cycle, but um, we're gonna try with this TBR. Um, I basically chose two genres that I've been really into lately. So I picked two genres that I know I've been in the mood to read. Uh, and then I picked within those genres books that were exciting to me. So um, here it is. The first book is uh, Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This is one that you may recognize uh, if, well, I mean, obviously everyone knows this book, but uh, that's not what I meant. You may recognize this as a book that I had planned to read a very long time ago on my channel and spoiler, I didn't finish it. <laughs> so I actually got, I think my bookmark's still in here. So I got 170 pages into this book it's not that I wasn't enjoying it. It was just like a really slow read and I just was not feeling it at the time. And this was literally like over a year ago. Um, and so I put it down with all intentions of picking it back up and I still haven't done that. Uh, but I wanted to get a Stephen King in this month as I am trying to get through a lot of his books. And also this is like one of the top Stephen King books that I want to get to. Uh, it's like at the top of my list of books of his that I'm interested in. So I really want to kind of dive back into this. I think I'm ready. Uh, this one is about a guy named Ben Mears who goes back to his hometown of Jerusalem's lot. And he's basically exploring the history of the Marston house. He's researching for uh, his new book, he's a writer. Um, and then something creepy happens and there are forces of darkness. And from what I know, there's vampires. Not a huge fan of vampires. However, <laughs> um, I feel like the haunted house vibes of this and the fact that it's Stephen King will probably work for me. Next, I have another horror book that I've had on my TBR for quite a while. I tried to kind of like mix this up and have some newer books that I purchased recently and then like some that have been sitting there on my TBR for a bit too long. Uh, and that is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I think this is actually like kind of a combo. Uh, I think it's partly historical, partly fantasy, partly horror. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. It is in a puritanical society. <laughs> don't generally like books that take place in Puritan times. However, I do love books about witches. Uh, and because this does have the horror element to it and a bit of dark fantasy, I think I'll like it. Um, and so also, I love this cover. <laughs> Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, so this one is about a woman who lives in this kind of like rigid puritanical society. There's like a prophet who's in charge of everything. And uh, the main character, Emmanuel, uh, is basically, it says, her very existence is blasphemy because her mother's union with an outsider of a different race cast her once proud family into disgrace. Uh, so she basically tries to do her best to follow the rules. Um, and then she, 
gets lured into the dark woods, is given uh, some diary from her mother, finds out that she was involved with the witches, and I assume there will be some witchy things going from there. So uh, excited to finally get to this. I hope that I like it. <laughs> Next, I have a newer purchase. Uh, this is one that I've been excited about for a long time because it actually came out in the UK, like, I want to say like a year ago. And a lot of the UK booktubers that I follow have been talking about it. Uh, and it just wasn't out here. I could have ordered it from the UK, but I waited until it came out here. And I, I've been basically hyped about this for a while. Uh, and that is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. So this one, I don't know too much about the actual plot line. I just know, oh yeah, it takes place at a, an amateur theater group. Uh, and so basically like the idea of this is that you're solving the mystery and I believe it's all written in emails. It's mixed media. Yeah, it looks like there's some texts as well, but it looks like mostly emails. Uh, and basically like there's a murder and there's where does it say it? <laughs> 15 suspects. Uh, and you as a reader are trying to like piece together the mystery and solve the mystery through these emails, like this mixed media. And this just sounds like so much fun and everything I want from a murder mystery. So I'm pretty hyped about it. I bought it like a couple weeks ago and I just cannot wait to get to it. So it is definitely a priority, like probably my next read. Then I have another one that is not old, but has been sitting on my TBR for a while and is another like hyped up mystery thriller that everybody's been talking about and giving good reviews and I've been meaning to get to and I just haven't. Uh, and that is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. So this one is about a female serial killer. Um, I believe she is a, yes, an English professor. Um, and from what I remember, I could just read you the synopsis, but we're just going to go from memory here. <laughs> um, from what I remember, she like kills men that she thinks are doing things wrong, to, to put it very vaguely. Um, and so essentially, um, I think it follows the other, it follows two perspectives, the English professor, who's the serial killer, and then uh, a student as well that's a freshman. I don't really need to know much more. Everybody that has reviewed it that I follow on BookTube has like really loved it. And uh, I'm just down for any serial killer story, but a female serial killer story, everything I need right now. Next, I have another like pretty hyped thriller. Um, I believe this one came out last year. This one came out last year. Uh, and that is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. So, I was kind of on the fence about this, and when it first got announced and first came out, I was like, not that interested, but people have been giving this such good reviews, and like so many people have been hyping it up that I just bought into it, and I was like, you know what? I need to read this. <laughs> um, so this is about uh, these two fathers, a black father and a white father, two dead sons, a quest for revenge and redemption. So I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, both of the sons are killed because they are gay. And these two ex-cons, the fathers of these two sons, I believe they were in a relationship with each other, the sons. Um, and they are ex-cons and they're, this is supposed to be like very gritty and dark. Uh, and they basically go out on a trail of revenge to try to kill, I guess, whoever uh, killed their sons. It's a revenge story. Um, I've heard it's very violent. And so I'm mentally preparing myself for that. I love stories that are thrillers and like crime thrillers and serial killers and all of that. But when it gets like really graphic, sometimes my, my stomach can't take it. So we'll see how I do with like the more violent scenes. But I have just heard so many good things about it. Like I had to, I had to get it from Book of the Month. <laughs> so here we are. And the next three that I have are actually also uh, Book of the Month picks. Not really intentional, but I kind of have been trying to get to some of my Book of the Month picks because I keep getting Book of the Month and then like not reading them. I mean, this is like a, a problem in my life is that I just keep buying books and then I can't keep up with reading them fast enough. But these are like some of the more recent Book of the Months that I've gotten that I just want to get to so I can start kind of getting that uh, TBR of Book of the Month books down. Uh, so the first one is actually the one that I chose for my Book of the Month for February, and that was The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This is a little outside my comfort zone for thrillers. I generally don't read too many domestic thrillers, but it sounded intriguing. So 
Uh, basically, it's this couple, Marissa and Matthew Bishop, and they seem to have it all, but Marissa is cheating on Matthew. That's not a spoiler. It's literally in the first paragraph of this. Um, and she goes to some therapist that is supposed to be able to like fix anybody in 10 weeks, and she becomes obsessed with this couple, and things are going to get weird and creepy from there, I'm sure. So we'll see how I feel about this one. Um, I actually have not read from this author duo yet. I know they're like a pretty big author duo in the thriller community and people have very mixed feelings about their books. So we'll see how I feel about this one and maybe I'll wanna pick up some of their other stuff. Then I have one that I got, I think as part of my box in January and I can't believe I haven't picked this up yet cause I was like super hyped about it. Um, that is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. So this is a serial killer story, which again, like everything I want in life. Um, and it is about a girl named Chloe Davis. And when she was 12, these six teenage girls go missing. And then uh, her father confesses to the crime that was like in the past. Um, and now 20 years later, isn't it always <laughs> 10, 15, 20 years later, um, she is a psychologist in Baton Rouge and some like parallels from the past start coming up. You know how it is. The past comes back to haunt her. She has to confront her past, etc., cetera, et cetera. I don't think I've ever read a book where it's the daughter of a serial killer. So I'm pretty intrigued and really excited to get to this this month. And lastly, uh, the 10th book on my TBR is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Another one that at first I was like, eh, about, like I wasn't sure I wanted to definitely read it when I first saw it come out. Um, but a couple of the people that I follow really, really loved this and I'm excited. Um, it is magical realism, which is why I was a little hesitant, but I've heard that it's like more thriller than magical realism. It's like a thriller with some surreal, surreal, surreal <laughs> elements. <laughs> Um, and this is about a guy, Travis Wren, who basically has a talent for locating missing people. And he gets hired by families to try to find people who are missing. Um, and so he takes on the case of this children's book author and goes to Pastoral, which is this kind of like reclusive community uh, that lives in some weird way. I don't know. I don't really want to read that much more of the synopsis because I don't want to get spoiled. Um, but he goes there, I believe he disappears, and it's about a cult. That's all I need to know. I love every book about a cult, so I'm into it. I'm excited. Fingers crossed that the magical realism doesn't ruin it for me. <laughs> In addition to that, I may pick up like one or two nonfiction books, which I know like who am I, but um, I have been interested in kind of like this like slow living minimalist movement. Uh, and so I'm kind of like picking up here and there some books about that. And so I'm probably gonna try to squeeze in one or two like short nonfiction books this month. Not sure which ones yet, uh, but that's probably on the docket, but I've already got like 10 books here. And as you'll see in my upcoming January, February wrap up, like. The reading, the reading year is just not, it's not happening so far. I wrote like a total of 13 books in the first two months, which is not by any means bad. Like I'm not trying to say you have to read a certain amount of books, but for me, that's pretty, that's pretty off. Like I was probably averaging, especially when I originally had my booktube channel before I disappeared into the ether, um, I was averaging like 10, 12 books a month. So for me to be finishing like six books a month, it's a little off, but uh, I have 10 here. We're gonna try our best to make reading a priority this month and try to go with, with the mood flow and see how it goes. Uh, so let me know in the comments what you are planning on reading for March. I'm so excited to hear about it and I'd love to talk with you about what books you're excited about in March. Uh, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.